Our God gives us victory. He refuses to leave us without victory. He refuses to leave us in a place where the enemy is over top of us as if he's winning. We said to you over and over this month, and when we talk about victory in God, it means at all times in every situation, beloved, you and I are winning. You and I are winning. I said you and I are. Tears streaming down our face, but we're still winning. Hearts heavy, but we're still winning. Families in turmoil. We are still winning. May not feel our best. As a matter of fact, as we were in praise and worship, I was jumping around a little too much and and I tweaked my knee and, 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 and alert uh, Sister Kara back there. I said, you need some medicine, don't you? I said, yeah, probably just a little bit. But guess what? I'm still with it. Still with it. I want to make sure that everyone that encounters us understand we are not defeated people. You may see us go through some storms and some battles, and if you catch us in a moment of honesty, we do not like that we're having to go through it. That's okay. Because if you keep listening to us, we'll tell you we are not defeated. We are winning. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory, makes us conquerors. We're clear about who we're winning through. Yeah, victory belongs to you, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see, see, we may, we're sure about who we're winning through. We're winning through him. Everybody shout, yes, Lord. Now, because we're winning, therefore, my beloved brethren, be firm, steadfast, immovable, always abounded in the work of the Lord, always being superior, excelling, doing more than enough in the service of the Lord, knowing and being continually aware that your labor in the Lord is not futile. It is never wasted or to no purpose. Let's pause right there and just tell him victory belongs to you, God. Come on, real big. Let's just tell him, yeah. Praise team is helping us. Yeah, come on. There we go. We go. We're saying it. Yep. Victory belongs. Victory belongs to you. Yeah. Yes, it does. Victory belongs to you. Come on, you tell him, yeah. Victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to you. Come on, let's say it real big this time. Everybody, victory, victory belongs. Before we move any further, we want to be clear that every demon, every battle we're up against, hallelujah. Real big, you say it, victory belongs. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Let's give him thanks real quick. Come on, let's give him a clap for Thanksgiving. 
a praise of thanksgiving. My God, thank you. My God, I just thank you. I thank you. It could be so differently. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My God, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So, um, I think I find myself, I find myself just every now and then have to, having to remind myself, and I just want you to do the same, that, uh, that man, yeah, there are trials that come and, and things that we're asked to go through, but our victory is not in us. And our victory is not in how well the situation may be through the eyes of those who are watching the situation. Our victory is in the one who lives inside of us. And who gives us peace that surpasses knowledge in the midst of storms. It's where our victory is. And that's why the Apostle Paul says, listen, guys, you can't miss this. As we gather week in and week out, you can't, you can't miss this reality that you and I can let nothing separate us from the love of God we found in Christ Jesus. See, what matters is not which storm you're in or out of. But it matters whether or not you've been separated from the navigator of the storm. If you get separated while you're going through, you're going to find yourself overwhelmed. Because, I mean, the truth of the matter is there's a lot you're dealing with. There's a lot we're dealing with. Man, this battle is not ours. Say that with me. This battle is not, it's not ours. So we've been speaking from the perspective of this conquering king. And last week, of course, was Easter, which everyone that I spoke to last week, everyone that I encountered, I, I, they would say, they would say, uh, uh, I know this is a busy time of the year for you. Isn't it? This is Easter time. This is my favorite holiday of all holidays we celebrate. And I said, really? Oh, Easter is? And I said, yeah, Easter is. Easter is because I know that it's not about bunnies. And I know it's not about uh, eggs. I know that the most important day on the calendar is the time that we take the time to celebrate the fact, not just that Jesus was born, because every person in this room was born. Every person throughout history in order to get here was born. Only one in all the world, past or present, has ever been resurrected for good. So when we think about what we just celebrated, <laughs> that was pretty big. <laughs> pretty big. He got up and stayed up. Lazarus came out at his behest, but Lazarus is back in the tomb. Jesus came out and is seated at the right hand of his father. Now, that's important. <laughs> that's important because no other religion gives us that. So, so I always like to, the week after Easter, sort of talk to those who come back out to say, now what? We just celebrate this huge victory. We celebrated this huge victory. Now what? And when we ended last week, I told you that one of the things that Jesus did when he got up out of the grave is he came to those of us that are, that are his children, that would become his disciples. And he says, I have all power. Everything that has ruled over you, I have broken its right to reign in your life. I have broken its back. 
every spirit of oppression and depression, every suicidal spirit, every spirit of lack and, and every spirit of addiction, he says, that has reigned over your life. I have busted its head. I have broken its authority. It has no right to rule you any longer. Hallelujah! So when we stand in here, we stand in here. It's amazing. It's emotional because there's a lot of spirits that have tried to reign over us. There's a lot of things that have attached itself to us and a lot of things that we were okay attaching itself to us. But we, we celebrate a risen king who busted the back of every strong man in our life. Victory belongs to him. Hallelujah. And then he turns around and he says to every one of us that are his disciples, I want to give you something. What do you want to give me? I want to give you power. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. Uh, subtopic, the power to become. Everyone shout, you have power. Yeah. To, to become. become. It's defined become as the process of coming to be something or a passing from one state of being into a new state of being. You have the power to go from one state of being into a whole new state of being. That's why, I, that's why I don't want you to trip out too bad about where you are today. And that's why I don't want you to let the enemy beat you up with shame and guilt about what you were yesterday. Because literally what Jesus did when he got up out of the grave is he says, I'm going to give you the power to become. To shift from what you used to be into a whole new state of being. Hallelujah. I said Hallelujah. Man, that's amazing stuff. Because now we get to come in here and we recognize when we look around that this is a collection of men and women who used to be something else. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Would you just look over at the person sitting on your left or right and say, you used to be what? Something else. <laughs> well, how did you become what you're becoming? By the power of God. Hallelujah. Because John 1 12 says to as many as received him to them gave he the power to become. We didn't have the power to become before him. That's why victory belongs to him. Hallelujah. I had no ability to be anything other than what I was being until him. Hallelujah. And now I have this ability to go from one state of being into another. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, any woman be in Christ, they are new creation. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So he says, I give you the power to become. Elder Dendy said something interesting on last Thursday's prayer call, which he normally does, the prayer call, and he was dealing with this subject of power, and um, he was talking about the fact, the reality, that, that no matter how much power you have, no matter how much power has, has been sent to you, the truth of the matter is that you will be uh, without power if you aren't connected to a power source. Are y'all listening to me? So you, in order for power to be realized, you must stay connected. Are you listening to me? He talked about when he went through a storm back when he was living in Greenville and his power was out. The lines were down and literally they were with out power and many of us live our lives we go home every day we are in church but we go home without power are y'all listening to me now it is not that God has lost power it is the fact that we are not connected we're not connected to the power so what I want to do today real quickly is I want to show you what the power sources are in your life and then you get to answer the question, am I connected to those sources? Okay? Because what I've found in life is that as we go through life, that God has given us the power to become, but he is expecting us to stay connected or plugged in to the very sources of power he has set up in our individual lives. Somebody shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All right. So, first one 
is you must be connected to the first source I want to talk about is the cross. Everybody shout the cross. The cross. Say it again. Now, I use the cross because I'm going, I, I speak in alliterations and, uh, of course, I'm talking about God. But I thought the cross was a good place for us to differentiate between the generic God and the Christian God. So when I speak of God, I want to make sure that I'm talk, we're talking about the same one. I'm talking about the one who came after us and died on a cross. I'm talking about the one who, who went down in the ground and got up in three days. All right. And so the cross is that connector. Are y'all listening to me? And so then if I'm plugged into the cross, immediately I wake up every day with the power that got him up off the cross. The power that allowed him to stay on the cross. The power that pulled him out of the grave. Somebody shout, yes, Lord. Say it again. Say it one more time. Everybody say the cross. Yeah, the cross. And so if you look at the early church, one of the first things they do, the first message that was preached, Sister Jennifer, in the early church was preached by Peter. And Peter said to the men and women who were looking at him, listening to him, he says, brethren and sister, and I want you to be clear, Acts chapter 2, he says, this Jesus whom you have crucified, God has made him both Lord and King. And he says to them, they said, well, what can we do? He says, repent and receive him, confess him. He is Lord. Who is Lord? Jesus whom you crucified. The cross is your connection back to God. Hallelujah. The, the cross is your connection back to God. I don't want to go through the cross. Well, you're going to have to take that up with God. Y'all listening to me? I, I, I told you this. I marvel at folk that, 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 that argue with me. How you kill me? Y'all Christians think so don't matter. How you going to say you the only way? Other gods, I, I, what do you mean? I didn't make this up. First and foremost, this is how arrogant we are. That we would offend the holy God with our lifestyles, then turn around to him and say we mad at the way you provided for us to get back to you. Are you listening to me? The nerve of you, the offender, to say to the God who is the judge, I don't like the avenue you gave me to get back to justice, to get back to forgiveness. The nerve of you, he should just judge us all. Because the wages of our sin is and always has been death. And so he says, I'm going to create a way. That cross. But I don't like that way. Well, he says then, if any man comes in through any other way, he is a liar and a thief. He says, no, you have to acknowledge what I went through for you. Now, now, now wait a minute, because while you're saying you don't like this way, you're going to acknowledge I got beat up pretty bad for no wrong of my own. I got bruised pretty bad for no wrong of my own. And so the cross is this huge connector. Everybody shout, yes, it is. And it's this huge power source. And the old saints used to say, they said, there is power. Power. What kind of power? In the, in the blood of the lamb. Yeah, everybody shout, yes. Mm -hmm. Second power source. Everybody shout, all right then. Second power source, and I want to make sure you write this one down and get it. Are y'all cold? Please don't. Y'all adjust the air. Everybody's cold, and, and I'm still sweating, so it's not going to matter much. All right, second power source. Y'all ready? Yes. The church. Everybody say the church. The church. You know, I know in our, in our culture, the church is sort of a pretty low place, and we like to get down on the church, and we like to, to, to really pick on the church, and folk in the church like to pick on the church. Y'all with me? Folk in the church like to pick on the church. But I just want to be clear that, that, that when Jesus was on that cross, he was giving birth to something. And, and I know y'all know not going to like this, but what he was giving birth to was called the church. I don't want to get caught up in, 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 in any type of uh, linguistical uh, exercise here. I know the kingdom of God being advanced, but, but the kingdom is going to be advanced through, through this vehicle that he gave birth to called the church. If we don't advance the kingdom, it's not going to be advanced. Y'all listen to me? So what God is trying to give birth to in the earth right now is supposed to come through this vehicle called the church. Another term for the church is his body. Y'all listening to me? So he came. 
So, so, so if you're walking around and you're not plugged into his body, and you say, all I need is my experience with the cross, you're going to find yourself deflated. Yeah. You're going to find yourself lacking the power. What we do week in and week out and coming together and what happens all across our land is pretty important. Not based on me, that's based on God. Amen. You open your Bibles, don't do this, but if you open your Bibles to Ephesians 4, the Bible says when Jesus ascended, he gave gifts to men. He gave those gifts to men and he gave some to be apostles and some to be prophets and some to be evangelists and some to be pastors and some to be teachers. And he gave them to us for the perfecting of the saints. Yeah. And then if you read over in Acts chapter two, when, the, when after they had encountered Jesus, what the Bible says that they did in the next passage uh, around verse 42 of chapter two, the Bible says that they would not forsake assembling, uh, coming together. I can't say that word that way right now. Ass Thank you. They would not stop coming together and giving themselves to the doctrine that had been handed to them. They knew that if they were going to have power. Beyond themselves, they not only had to stay connected to the cross, they had to stay connected to one another. Because sometimes we get tired by ourselves. And what we recognize is the difference when we see the church the way God gave us the church. We recognize that the major difference between his kingdom and the enemy's kingdom is that God never, ever, ever isolates us for the purpose of trying to make us something by ourselves. Everything God is up to in your life and in your life and in your life is for the whole body. Hallelujah. And that's why he reminds us that when you're part of his body, every joint must supply. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So do me a favor and shout down your row and tell your neighbor, I know you get fed up with the church. But it's one of your power sources. And if you plug in the right way. You're going to find yourself stronger than you would be by yourself. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Yeah, they start giving themselves to one another. And the Bible says that the more they gather and the more they recognize that their strength was in their numbers, that God kept adding to their number. Such as should be saved. Because God is intentional about doing something through his body. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad I'm a part of his body. I'm so glad I get to work with you and you and you in his body. And I'm so glad that together we're coming to understand that the more we stay connected and the more that we plug into what he's doing with this body, the stronger we're going to be to this next power source, which is our community. You know, for many of us, we, we live our lives and once again, we come to church, but we go back to our communities and we think that we can, we can build our homes and we can we can, we can be happy inside our homes and, and, and not worry about our community. But part of our community is our home. But guess what I found out, Sister Nika, Dr. Nika? Guess what I found out? That if I build a happy home with my lovely wife, my home is only as safe as the community that is in. Y'all listening to me? So at the end of the day, if I want to be safe in my home, I better care about the community that is in. And the same is true for every one of us. And what happens when we start to recognize that is that we start to understand that everything God was doing with the early church, he did through the cross. And everything he did through the cross and through the early church, he did to impact the community. Y'all listening to me? I said, are y'all listening to me? As I, as, I, as, I, as I began to think about it in Acts chapter 16, I believe it is, Paul is walking through the city and he's been just, just telling them about Jesus the way we're supposed to. And he's in a community and there's this little girl who is, who is, you know, working witchcraft, if you will, or reading people's palms or reading their future. Uh, and, and she's been doing this all around, just following Paul. And the Bible says that one day Paul got, he got a little, little frustrated because he recognized that, hey, if I'm going to really have impact in this community, I'm going to have to deal with the spirits that have set up strongholds within this community. Y'all listening to me? So he turned around, he said to the girl, he said, you know what, you, you know what, you, you, you've run the mark enough. All right. All right. So I didn't come here for us to coexist. I came here to kick your can out of here. 
And so he got the spirit out but left the girl. Don't forget that. Now, now when I talk about cleaning our communities up, I'm not talking about running everybody out. I'm talking about getting the spirit out, leaving the folk. All right, y'all listen to me. Everybody shout hallelujah. Now watch what happens. The Bible says after he got the spirit out and healed the girl that the people that were making money off of her went to the city officials. And they said, we have to do something about Paul and his buddies. And they literally said, he's turning our city upside down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you read over in chapter 17, they, they, they actually beat them. This is a, they had left there because they had done their work, and they went to another city called Thessalonica. And over in Thessalonica, they were in there handling their business. And in chapter 17, it's not in, your notes, in the notes, but in chapter 17, they were working their business, and they came in, and they said, y'all have to do something with these men. Now, in chapter 16, they put them in prison because they, they, they didn't want them to, to keep healing folk in their community. They didn't want them to keep getting folk to the cross. Because if you can leave folk, watch this, displaced or disconnected from the cross, you can keep them in bondage. Y'all listening to me? See, that's one of the reasons I want to make sure you understand that it matters what church you are engaged in because real ministry don't bring you in here to take advantage of you. It brings you in here to empower you so we can get to the community. Are y'all listening to me? Somebody shout, yes, Lord. Real ministry brings you in here to pour something in you so that you don't go out there dealing in warfare with spirits uncharged. Are y'all listening to me? So, so they put him in prison, but they didn't realize that their power, hallelujah, was not contingent upon their condition. Hallelujah. And so they put him in prison and they bound him up. And the Bible says that they put him in the depth of the prison, deep in the prison. And they put a guard and told him, make sure you pay attention to them. And the guard paid attention, y'all. And the Bible says around midnight, Paul and Silas, they looked at one another and say they bound our hand and they bound our feet. But they thought that was our power. Where our power at? Our power is in the cross. Let's go ahead and sing about it. Let's pray about it. Let's talk about it. And they started praying and singing and talking until the power of God showed up in their condition. Hallelujah. Would you do me a favor and shout, it is possible? Regardless of your condition, for you to pray a while and praise a while and pray a while and praise a while and pray a while and praise a while until what had you bound literally breaks off because of the power that you're connected to. And if you get free, hallelujah, your community might mess around and say, don't leave me like this. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas was about to leave and the, and the soldier was about like, what's going on? They said, hold up, don't you kill yourself. Because he's thinking if the power leaves, I got no reason to live. Hallelujah. But the power turned back around and said, you can be a part of the power too. And they gave him Jesus. And I'm telling you that what our community needs is what you have found in Jesus. But if you don't recognize what you have found, and if you miss the fact that that's your power, then the world will never come to know what I have come to know about our risen king. Somebody shout, all right, Dan. Say it again. Say it one more time. All right. I don't, I'm literally out of time, but I'm going to take about an extra five or six minutes to give you a couple keys to becoming because this is important. Y'all ready? First key to becoming, because I've just told you here, what are your power sources? Let's do a review. First power source, cross. the cross, which, which ultimately is the Christian God. Okay. Yes. Second power source, church. the church, which ultimately is God's body. Right. What's your third power source? Community. Which includes your home. Yeah. So don't lose your home while doing the work of church. So everybody shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say it again. Yes. And while you're building your home, don't lose sight of the fact that the people down the street need a little bit of that power too. Everybody shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So now that we have the power sources that we have to plug into, it's up to you to plug in. It's up to you to plug in. But they're available to you. Don't lose sight of the fact that God has asked us to assemble to draw strength from one another. Hallelujah. 
Now, I, 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 I want to go deeper into this, but I'm not. But just consider this, that Adam was walking with God. And it was God who said, it's not good for you to be alone. Now, you, you just deal with that later. Because some of you so deep, I don't need nobody but Jesus. That ain't what God said. <laughs> now, you take that up with God. But God said that you need something along with me. And I'm going to bring it to you. It's called my body. And together, if the cross and the, and the, and the church, his body come together, we have impact in our community. And communities are better when men and women, boys and girls, get up and connect with church. And that church makes sure that it connects them to the cross. Amen. Communities are better. Somebody shout, yes, they are. Yes, they are. And so I put this note, it's on the app, it's in the notes, that when we get individuals connected to the cross and the church, the result is a strong community. The result is what kind of community? All right, let me give you the, couple, the keys real quick as I make my way to my seat. Y'all all right? Y'all yes. sure y'all all right? Yes. All right, real good. The first key is you, got, you must get and stay connected to the power source. I've been saying that all along. I don't want you to miss that. You must do what? Now, some of you are good at getting connected, but you're not good at the second part, which is staying connected. Y'all listening to me? And many times when we disconnect, it's because we got offended. And I just want to tell you now before you, you harp on that too long, nobody was offended like he was. That's why I'm going to connect you to the greatest offense the world has ever seen. Y'all listening to me? Which is the cross. Pretty offensive. What they did. They spit on him. They laughed at him. They mocked him. They beat him literally to inches of his life. And then he ultimately died for no wrong of his own. Great offense. So before we carry offenses too far, let's remember we're connected to the greatest offense the world has ever known, and that connection has gotten us forgiveness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's get and stay connected to the power sources. Let's get and stay connected to ministry. In John 15, Jesus says, if you abide in me, my word abides in you. You can do, you can do anything. You will bear much fruit. But here's what he says in John 14, verse 5. He says, I'm telling you this because without me, you can do nothing. Now, you say, I've been doing stuff without him. No, I didn't say you can't do stuff. You can't do nothing of significance. And I don't know about you, I don't want to live an insignificant life. And the truth of the matter is, the reason you're here is because you don't want to live an insignificant life. And the way that we make sure that our life matters is that we plug into the power sources. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say it again. I want to say this real quick, that as you think about this, especially within our city, Spartanburg here, there's a lot going on in our communities. Many of you live in some of the communities over by the north side. And through the city areas of our city, there's a lot going on, a lot that you could plug into, a lot that you could benefit from. And I just want to challenge you to do so because ultimately the more that we are outside of here operating in our community, the more the community is going to come to know the cross, the more they're going to come to know the church of the real God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout yes, Lord. Yes. So you got to get and stay connected. Everybody shout get and stay connected. Yes. Second key is you must be willing always, not sometimes, but always be willing to serve within the power sources. So within, within what God is asking you to do, always be willing to serve within, and, and I, I, specifically within this great, I, I, once again, I spent time talking about the greatest offense because I think sometimes when you miss the fact that God wants us to operate and allow him to operate within offenses. Y'all listening to me? And sometimes when we're offended most, that's when God really wants to operate. Y'all listening to me real good? So, so one of the things that you and I must be willing to do as we connect to our power sources is be willing to allow God to help us to serve within those power sources. We need to be willing to serve within the church. We need to be willing to serve within his body. We need to be willing to serve within our communities. We need to be willing to serve within those sources, because the more that God can get us inside of his, the sources that he has set up, the more power is going to be released to those who don't know him. Everybody shout all right then. 
Now you think I'm making this up, so I'll give you this passage and then I'll move on. Galatians 6, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, brethren, if someone, if one of your brothers and sisters, I don't have any brothers and sisters. Yes, you do. You're part of a whole body of brothers and sisters. And if they're overtaken in the fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself. This any man should boast. Now here's what I love about it in verse 2. He says, bear ye one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. He said it's literally the law of Christ that you carry one another's burdens. That you don't let those who are on your left and right go through by themselves. Now it's going to be hard to help you carry your burden if you never plug in. But if you plug in, we're here to help you carry your burden. Y'all listening to me? I asked for a ministry set up, and last week, I don't know if y'all heard them, they said that they agreed to give away $14,500 last week to give it away back into our community, back into our church. You say, why would y'all be giving money away? Because we're just helping folk carry their burden. Y'all may not be 100% familiar with our prayer ministry, but, but weekly they are on the prayer line getting together to pray. You, know, you say, why would they be getting together to intercede? Because literally prayer helps you to carry your burden. And you may not plug in every Monday morning through Friday morning, but you say, why do you keep doing this? There's only a handful of folk calling in because I just know that sooner or later y'all going to wake up and realize that, wait a minute, there are sources here to help ignite my day so that I could go and fight a little bit better than I've been fighting. But every Monday through Friday, we have this line right there just for you to call in, plug in, plug in. Every Wednesday made it real easy. You only have to come back out here. This big old place, all these lights, don't even come back out. Pick up your phone and dial a number. And we're just going to talk. This Wednesday, we start talking about emotional distress and the fact that folk are going through more than you know. And sometimes it's hard to deal with. And one of the frustrating things about the church is, is that we'll all come to church together, but we wear so many masks and we make people comfortable in hiding what's really going on with them emotionally. You know, it's frustrating because here's what I know for sure is that the Bible spends a lot of time talking about emotions because emotions will get the best of us. If we don't plug in to the right power sources, somebody shout yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And there are people within our ministries who are who, who are battling depression, who are battling spirits that we have to begin to deal with. if we're going to really be what God is calling us to be. Everybody shout yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So we had. So you say, how do we deal with it? Pastor White? we just start serving within these power sources. And so so God says, Galatians 6, 1 and 2. Fulfill the law of Christ when you carry one another's burden. And then verse 9 and 10, he says, oh, yeah, and I know this is not easy what I'm asking you. So don't grow weary in well-doing. Yeah. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. He says, I just, I just want you to know that. You're going to get tired, but don't grow weary. Yeah. Well, how am I going to keep from growing weary? Get back to your power sources. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because when, you, when you've given your best, get back over where people can help to encourage you and build you up and strengthen you to go back out and make a difference. Everybody shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say it again. Yes, Lord. Say it one more time. Yes, Lord. All right, so then the last key to becoming that I want to give you today is that not only must you stay connected, you got to stay. Everybody, show you, everybody say it with me. You have to stay connected. You have to, connected. You have to serve. You have to serve. And then you all have to always Every day, submit your life to the power sources. If you don't learn true submission, you're going to lose sight of the power God has given you to become something different. Now, I'm going to tell you something that frustrates me with many of us in, in the kingdom of God or in church. Is that we come over here and all this power is available to transform us. And we're content to stay here and be who we used to be. The message today is about the power to become, not the power to stay. I don't want you to stay what you were. I want you to become something new. And I know this for sure, that you and I will never become if we don't learn how to submit. Because what God requires of us is more than we would give of ourselves. What God requires of me in my marriage is more than I would give of myself if he weren't in the middle of it. So we have to submit. We have to yield ourselves even when we want to fight. 
And the more we yield our lives to this great power that came through the cross and to his body, which is called the church, of which we are a part of, and we yield our lives to serve within our communities, guess what happened? We start to see the Lord take us from one state into another. And literally, we get to serve in communities that knew us one way, but now they have to see us a totally different way. What an, what an amazing and a mighty God we serve. I said, what a mighty, mighty, mighty God we serve. So in Ephesians 5, as the praise team makes ready to come, in Ephesians 5, the Bible says, here's the deal. Don't be drunk with wine wearing access. In other words, the Bible says, whatever you do, don't, don't, don't lose sight of the fact that to walk with God, you need to be sober-minded. The enemy wants you drunk on life. God wants you sober-minded. But here's the beauty of it. He says, don't get drunk with wine wearing access. But he says, here's what I want you to do. What do you want me to do, Lord? He said, submit yourselves. The last verse, keep going. Submit yourselves one to another one to another there it is verse 21 be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ Every hour.